Welcome to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, welcome to season three, episode one of Jim and Java. I can't believe that we're moving into our third season. It's an exciting adventure. This journey has been tremendous as we've produced somewhere in the neighborhood of 235 videos that are addressing the area of development and fundraising specifically designed to help nonprofit leaders increase income and become fully funded. And so what a privilege it is to come here every week and to answer your questions. I don't take it for granted that each and every one of you make major sacrifices every day to be in nonprofit work. And I know that you consider it a privilege to work oftentimes for those organizations. But for me to be here to serve you, to help you get better is our goal and that's our strategy. So as we move into a new year, into 2023, I'm excited about the prospect for the future and all that it holds for you, for your organization, for my organization, and what we're gonna bring to this channel. So I welcome you and I encourage you to share these videos with friends and colleagues so that we can grow this network. And if you are not already a subscriber, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Well, our first question today is from Leanne in Annandale, Virginia. And Leanne asks, what are some fundraising tips you have as we start 2023? Well, thanks, Leanne. I appreciate that so much. Uh, your question means a lot to me. What I would say is, as we enter into 2023, we need to take a step back and get a glimpse of what things look like in 2022. The year ended sort of right down the middle. It wasn't as good as 2021, uh, but it wasn't quite what the numbers were pre-pandemic of 2019. We saw a little small steady increase but I, at this point, I'll take any increase at all. And so uh, there's been a mixed bag. Some organizations like mine, uh, the organization I serve is down about 9% this year. But from the standpoint of overall, it's uh, kind of been hit or miss with a lot of nonprofit organizations. Uh, some of the comments that I've seen is that it was a terrible year. Others have said that it wasn't a bad year and that they saw some increase. I don't hear anyone saying they had a tremendous increase. Uh, some of it was small but steady increase. And at this point, I'll take small and steady. That will work out fine for, for our growth as well, too. As you take a glimpse back at 2022, Start to look at what are some of the things that specifically happened. I always use the phrase, you want to make sure that you shut the back door and open that front door wide. What that means is that you always want to look for ways and look for opportunities to stop people from going outside your organization, leaving if they currently help, and fling that door wide open so that people can be able to give to you as much as possible. And that's what we really want to look for as we look back into 2022. Don't just look at the bottom line in giving. There's so many factors included in whether you had a successful year last year or not. Income itself is one indicator. Did that increase, decrease, or the stay the same? But look at did people increase in their giving, individual people increase in their giving. Did you have more donors giving this year? Did you have more gifts? Remember that one couple or individual can give anywhere between 12, 14, 16, 18 times a year. And we've seen that quite often. Did the number of gifts increase? Did the average gift size increase? and did you get more people giving it might be it might look like you had a great year if your income went up but you but then when you drill down you'll see 
that really you had less people giving. So you may have had one or a handful of gifts skew your overall giving. So it looked like you had a, a year, year over year, an increase. But really when you drill down, there's so many different factors to look at. The second tip that I would have for you is I would really begin a planning process. I would look at how is each of your income strategies producing income. Now, if you're an individual who's raising their own personal funding like I do, uh, I raise my own personal funding, plus I also raise it for a nonprofit organization. However, if you're an individual, you want to look at what are the communication strategies I used? What are the things that I did over the year? Did you send a letter every month, every quarter, once a year? What was the impact of that? Oftentimes when you don't communicate enough, it sends a message to individuals that you either don't care or you're too busy for them. And even if you are in great work, you've got to be careful that you aren't sending a message that you're too busy for your people. Your individuals giving to you need to feel like they are partners. Now, if you're part of a nonprofit organization raising money centrally for that organization or organizationally, you'll want to look at your specific income strategies. Are you doing direct mail? Are you calling people after direct mail? Are you having face-to-face -face appointments with people? making sure that each one of those strategies is growing and producing the income needed for your success. Now, those individual programs, you need to look at are those mature programs or their startup programs. Starting out with mailings to totally new donors or what we call them new donor acquisition strategies, those cost significantly more money. In fact, in the beginning, you may actually lose money. You may, in all reality, you may be raising 50 cents for every dollar you spend. But over time, you'll eventually see a net income and then a 2 to 3% increase or response rate on that giving. But if, you're due, if you've never done anything like that and your strategies are... are older strategies. You may even have some that are dying strategies, but if you've got some more mature strategies, those should be doing pretty well. Set goals for each of those strategies. If you are adding a phone call and you have a calling team, make sure that that calling team, you are setting goals for number of dials, number of times they reach people, how, how many people do they actually speak with on a daily, weekly basis, monthly basis, and what is their communication strategy and also how much money are they raising comparing from 2021 to 2022 or 2022 to 2023. All those things are extremely important as you're planning and trying to find the most successful strategy. Also look, over, look at crossover strategies. Are you doing some events? An event, a Mass donor, that would be your direct mail people. A mid-level donor, that would be the individuals you may be calling. Or a major donor may also be at those events. All three of those could be an event, could be at your event. And so I consider that what I call a crossover strategy. We see that people do cross over to give into different areas. So it's really, really important that you take some time and take a look at what kinds of strategies you're doing and set goals for the coming year. You may need to add some strategies. You may need to drop some strategies. Some other strategies you may need to put more funding into those strategies. And that brings about another point, which is another tip. Look at your staffing for the year. You may be barely scraping by or really pushing your staff way too much in what they're doing. Make sure that you don't overwork your staff and look at the possibility of what it means to pay someone a little bit more money to bring in significantly more money to the organization as a whole. So those are all important elements, important tips. As you move into the year, there are so many different strategies you can employ. Make sure you don't become very vulnerable and put all of your eggs into one basket. 
I see too many organizations who rely too much on events for income. No event, really, frankly, no strategy should be bringing in more than 30% of your income. And we saw that a lot as an example during the pandemic. We saw that when the pandemic hit in the spring of 2020 and people had to cancel their events, the organizations that couldn't do events online were devastated because they had so much riding on that particular event. Events are great to have. They're one of my favorite strategies to employ, but don't leave yourself very vulnerable. It would be just like investing in the stock market and you put everything into international stocks or everything into, uh, into options or even real estate interest. You've got to be careful because those are volatile areas. And if you put too much or all your money into one area, you could be hit when they're hit. And so the same thing applies with your income strategies. Be very careful not to invest too much money into one strategy. So Leanna, I hope that helped. I hope that this was helpful to you and to any one of you who are listening. I just appreciate you so much. Once again, if you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And as I always say, I'm here to help you get fully funded in the coming year. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.